Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at the new Unity timeline along with Playmaker. So I'm using Unity 2017.1, but I believe this is also available for Unity 5.6. So what timeline is, is it's a way to animate things in Unity. And when I first heard that, I was thinking, okay, well, you know, there's lots of ways to animate things in Unity. But the more that I've looked into Timeline, the more that I've discovered just how powerful it actually is. And when you first look at it on the surface, like we're going to look today, you might still be thinking, hmm, okay, yeah, it's okay. But uh, continue with me. I'm going to make a couple of tutorials for this, and I'm going to try and break things up a little bit more logically. So we're not going to get too in-depth in this tutorial. I'm just going to show you how the basics of getting started with Timeline and Playmaker. So if you've never used Timeline before, this is for you. So I've got a simple scene set up and I set this up before for another tutorial that I'm working on. But basically I just have a, a scene with a uh, simple plane, a couple of blocks, and this agent is working by nav mesh. So it is uh, it nav meshes around. I'll show you how that works using pathfinding. Now to follow along with my tutorial you don't have to have this kind of an agent um, but you do want to have something either a first person controller or a third person controller or something that moves just so you can follow along. Now in my scene I'm gonna make this pretty simple. We're just gonna add an actual sphere into the scene and we're gonna animate the sphere. And that's it. So the next thing we're gonna need is an actual timeline for the animations to take place. A timeline can animate multiple things, have sounds or whatever else you need all within one timeline. Or you can use multiple timelines as we're gonna see in some other tutorials. But for the first tutorial, I'm just going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to actually just call it timeline. You can call this whatever you want. I just don't want to, you know, lose my timeline. After that, we're going to add a component to it. I believe it's a component. Let me take a look. And okay, I changed my mind on how I'm going to deal with that. I'm not going to go component. I'm going to go window, and then choose timeline editor. And this is going to bring you up the new timeline uh, editor window. So I'm going to dock it down at the bottom here, so I have more access to it. And we can create the timeline components easier just from here. So we click on timeline to make sure that's selected and then use the create button down here. And now what it's going to want you to do is to actually save the timeline. This is basically an asset file or what we might call an object file in Playmaker. So we need somewhere to save it. And I'm just going to save mine into a new folder here. And uh, I have one already called timeline and we'll just call this uh, Timeline Tutorial. You can call yours, whatever you want. And once it's done, it's gonna open up a new timeline for you. And it's gonna add a uh, animator to whatever object you have. So I select a timeline, although I'm not gonna actually animate the timeline object because it's just an empty game object. So if I animated it, you wouldn't actually see anything animate. But the more importantly, what we've got here is this playable director. This playable director is basically the timeline controller here. And we're going to go over that just a little bit after. So the first thing we want to do is just grab the sphere and try and drop it onto our timeline. So what we want is an animation track because we're going to animate this sphere. Now if we go back to the sphere, you should see that it's added an animator component. And that's fine, we're not going to really mess around with that. It needs to be there, but we don't need to do anything to it. So let's go back to our timeline. And I'm just going to click lock over here on the right hand side corner so that I don't lose the focus of the timeline when I move around. So I don't need to be clicked onto timeline anymore. So let's find our sphere, where is it? So I'm gonna just send her to 000 so I can find it. And uh, double click it. In that scene view, it would help. So here it is. So I'm just gonna place my sphere right on the ground here because this is where I want it to start. And what I'm going to do is actually animate the sphere now. So, I mean, you could use this for doors, bridges, all kinds of things. Say, for example, in your environment would be a good way to do this. And now that we're on the timeline, I'm going to click record on sphere. And what this allows me to do is add keyframe elements to this. 
So at the beginning, I wanted to start right where it is. So I can do this by going to the position and saying, right click, add key, and it will keep this keyframe right here, recording the position. So what I wanted to do is eventually, after a few seconds, I wanted to jump up into the air. So we can add a keyframe here, as it already has one here. And then I want it to uh, come back down, for example. So we'll move it back down. So I think that's a good spot. So it actually already added a, a keyframe here for us as we do this. So let's unclick the record because that's all I wanted to do. And as you can see, we can just scrub through this. And I should have done something before, which I didn't do. Sorry guys, if you click down here on this gear, I'm gonna change this to seconds, not frames. The reason being is that frames actually will change depending on our frames per second, right? So if we're running on a really fast computer, you know, maybe we're going 60 to 90 frames per second. If we're running on a mobile device, it might be 30 frames per second. So doing animations by frames per second is sort of um, not really a good way to do it. It includes a lot of guesswork. So we just want to change this to seconds and then it will be much better. So this is delta time. There we go. So we can also hit play here and it will play through. And it looks good. So if we just play our game, you see right off the bat, it starts to play through once. Should probably readjust my game view here a little bit. So to adjust our game view, I'm just gonna set it to here. I'm on scene, then I'm gonna find my camera. Can just type camera to find it. Select the main camera and then choose game object, move to view. So what this is going to do is set up my game view to right. So what I wanted to do there was align with view, not move to view. So now when we go back to our game scene, we can see what's going on there. Okay, let's play that one more time. Good. Now the first thing I, I want to do is I probably want to have this ball loop, so I'm just going to go back to my timeline, and on my timeline I can see the um, wrap mode. So wrap mode, I'm just going to change this to loop. And what will this will do is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to loop this through and through. Awesome. So next, what I'm going to do here is maybe I don't want this animation to play right away. I only want this, you know, animation to play when my character is, you know, nice and close to the ball and then it'll start bouncing. So in this case, I'm going to disable this play on awake. And so we need a way to trigger it and we're going to use Playmaker to do that. So I'm just going to take the sphere itself, go to Playmaker, and I'm going to add an FSM to this. Now I'm going to take the sphere collider here and make it larger. I'm just being lazy here. We could use another collider, but I'll just use this one. And we'll add is a trigger. And now on our playmaker state, we'll just call this one wait for trigger because that's what we're doing. So we'll go to our actions and choose trigger and use the trigger event. So when we have a trigger event, we're going to send a new event here. We'll just call this triggered and add this state, or sorry, add this event, which will go to a new state and we'll call this start timeline. 
Now, to get this to work with Playmaker, you're going to need my new uh, Playmaker actions here. They should be part of the ecosystem fairly quickly. Currently, you need to get them from my GitHub account if you're watching this in the first week or two. And uh, like I said, pretty soon they'll be part of the ecosystem. So go ahead and check for them there as well. So uh, if you need to download them, my GitHub link will be below this in the YouTube video. And once you have those, they will show up in the timeline actions here. So what we want to do is play the timeline. So we can use this simple play timeline. And the timeline is not the owner, which is the sphere. In fact, the timeline is the timeline. So let's give this a try. And I think I did forget something here, is that one of these should probably have a rigid body on them, so let's have a look here. We'll go to our AI agent, which has no collider on it, so that's probably a problem too. Just add a kinematic rigid body here. And there we go, once we've gone into the trigger area, it starts the animation. So you could see this how this could be used, for example, for an opening door or you know for all kinds of cinematic scenes that you know character runs into the scene and you know some monsters jump out at you or whatever else it may be. And so we're gonna look at that more in another tutorial here following this one. I just wanted to get you started on the very basic basic basics of this timeline but it can do much more than just this. So check out the next tutorial on the timeline and